God is good. And all the time, God is good. Our lessons this morning are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first 11 verses, and also Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, the first 8 verses from 1 Corinthians. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you were also being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I have handed on to you of the first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. From Mark's Gospel. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will ro roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you'll see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. The message this morning is entitled By the Grace of God. And that's what it is. Now, in the 10th verse of our first lesson, Paul wrote, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. Now, I, can, I think I can speak for all of us when I say that I am so glad that our eternal destiny doesn't depend on what we've done or are going to do, past, present, future. But it depends entirely on the grace of God. And so for me, Easter is that sudden and that very glorious realization that everything that is good, everything that is right in this world is because God made his righteousness instead of what we do, anything we could say, think, or do, be the determining factor. It's his grace. Now, Easter is about fresh starts, about new beginnings. It's about leaving all the yucky stuff behind. And it's starting over with the best of the best. Now, don't get me wrong, even the most deplorable people on planet Earth um, have done some amazingly good things. There's good in everybody. However, no matter how yucky some of the parts of our lives have been, there have been some really noble and Christ-like moments for all of us. Now, the probably, problem being that hardly anybody ever notices all the good stuff when we just give them one juicy little tidbit of indiscretion on our part to remember. 
Now, I suspect that there is a very good reason why everybody wants to remember all the yucky things about our lives instead of the many times when we really shined. And I suspect it's because of the prince of this world. Satan is at the center of all of that fear-mongering and the instigation of that hate and all that ill will that blows our way. But do you know something? Today is Easter. Today is the day that we celebrate and we remember that the stone of death, judgment, and decay, it has rolled away. That nasty fella who keeps bringing up all that old dirt about our lives, uh, forever and always lost his power. Um, because Jesus Christ is in charge of our future. Because of Easter morning, we have been born anew to a living hope that forever points to regeneration, to renewal, to an infinite number of Easter morning fresh starts. Now, of special significance on this Easter Sunday, Paul writes, he says, For I hand it on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more, five, more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most who were still alive, though some have died. And then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. You know, Regardless of how much good Paul did for the church, his history of being the chief priest, head, hit squad henchman, I mean, that was targeting Christians in the early church, that's something that stayed with him for the rest of his life. And it's for very good reason that new Christians were, who weren't familiar with him were, were afraid of him, that, you know, shot away from him, hid from him. He had been responsible for jailing and even putting to death many who claim the name above all names whose resurrection we celebrate on this day. Now, in resignation, however, to this cross that Paul was destined to bear for the rest of his life, he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder, harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, so you have come to believe. To his dying day, Paul grew into this new work that he was destined to become solely because of the grace of God. And so throwing all fear aside discounting all the naysayers, all of those around him who would drag him down, Paul became the new creation in Christ Jesus that he knew in his heart he was destined to be. Now likewise, by the grace of God, none of us are defined any longer by our past. <clears throat> in Christ Jesus, we've been given a new hope, a new life, a new destiny. And, and I, I just love how the events of that first Easter unfold. By the grace of God, normal, everyday people, just like you and just like me, uh, people that were crushed, who were beaten down by life, uh, they were just doing their best to make it through just another day. Now bear in mind that while we might know the rest of the story, these women who were on their way to the tomb, they didn't have a clue. And so with a crushed spirit, they screwed up their courage to perform that one final act that they could do for Jesus. And so somberly, they headed for the tomb. They had armfuls of spices. Their intent was to anoint the body of their friend and loved one. Now at that junction of time, they were simply too numb to take into account the grace of God.
Now when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of, to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. Do you really want to talk about the grace of God? Well, God had this. God had this from the very beginning. Not only was the stone rolled away, but there was no longer any need for that armload of spices that each of them were carrying. It's at this juncture that an angel of God clues them in as to what grace really means. And so as they enter the tomb, they see a young man. They, they saw a young man dressed in white robe, sitting on the right side, and they're alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you'll see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The God of grace is still with us. The grace of God is that God is still on the throne. The unbelievable riches of mercy and grace are in store for any who will call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so on Easter Sunday, the great deceiver lost the campaign of terror, lies, and deceit that he had been waging on planet Earth. And, and by the way, he's still trying. But that doesn't mean just because he lost back then that he's given up his game. The, the way some people were treating each other in the media, um, even in homes, children against parents, husbands against wives, and vice versa. I mean, it's appalling. The way personal integrity and a person's word being their bond years ago, today it's just a travesty. But the real grace of God is this. God is not done with any of us just yet. Easter is proof positive of that. Notice has been served in the very heart of hell that the Lord Jesus Christ has beaten Satan and all who follow him. They're in a sinking ship all around us. We might see the feeble attempts of the enemy's last stand, but... Now, bear in mind, he's trying to take as many with him as possible before he's cast into the pit and then into the lake of fire. I mean, but the grace of God is that despite all fear, all trepidation, the word, God's word, is going to get out. And our lesson from Mark's gospel ends on the sour note of the women saying nothing to anyone of the angel's words to them. Now, obviously, the word of God does get out. I mean, the women do tell Peter, who is not listed among the other disciples. Why? Well, he denied him. Remember, after the resurrection, Jesus says, Peter, do you love me more than, you know, the rest of these? Says it three times. Counteracting that denial that he made in, in you know, the chief priest's garden. Reinstating him as a member of the church. Now, the people did tell Peter, they did tell the rest of the disciples, and they eventually did go to Galilee as they'd been told by the angel. And as Paul noted many years later, he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, to one untimely born, he appeared to me. The grace of God is that no matter how dark a night of the soul you might experience, the sun is going to rise on Easter morning. The stone is going to roll away from the tomb. And the new hope is going to be the timeless message of God's amazing and matchless grace. Now that ever-renewing good news of the gospel is that whatever shameful things you might have ever done in your past, 
they are not remembered on those heavenly shores. Now our Lord Jesus Christ took all that yucky stuff that brings so much shame to you and I and he took it on his own shoulders when he was raised up on the cross. And he personally flung it in Satan's face when he descended into hell before he rose from the dead as is affirmed in the Apostles' Creed. On this Easter morning, would you affirm with me, if you so desire, this, this timeless affirmation of the church from years ago? We call it the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The grace of God is an amazing and all-powerful thing. It's the grace upon which we can all currently stand. And for when you are set free from all the chains of darkness, you are free indeed. Amen? Let us pray. Father God, the stone rolled away. And Lord God, you are still saving lives this day. And so on this Easter morning, we give you thanks, we give you praise, and Lord, we dedicate our lives as to being a disciple of our Lord, our Savior, and our God, Jesus the Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen.